Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. As you can see, we are continuing our Quake Let's Play series for the PC. And uh, today we're going to attempt to tackle Episode 4, which is by far the, uh, the hardest episode in the game. And the one I am the least practiced at. I used to play it a lot back in the day. Um, but uh, I honestly just haven't really played through it much in recent years. And so when I went to go and try to play this on stream the other day, I just ended up getting wrecked by episode four. So, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and start this and <laughs> let's hope for the best, guys. All right. So uh, if I recall correctly, you could try to take out some of these guys from the top here, which isn't usually what I do. I usually take the risky way and I just go guns blazing and I just jump straight into the water below which is what you kind of have to do um we're gonna go this way because this is the necessary way to go there's gonna be this elevator that's gonna come up and we have to get off of it and I'm gonna try to take these guys out real quick there's gonna be some quad damage in here but I want to try to make the best use of it as possible, if possible. And then with that, we're going to come down here, try to kill all, kill all these guys if possible since we've got quad damage. And basically we flip this switch here, which uh, reveals a door down below. We're gonna come back, grab a few things, take out this dude up here. And there's a little bit of a secret up here. You can actually get into this room by jumping and touching this you can't do it from here but remember that um you know jumping at the top of a hill trick i talked about well they actually incorporate it as a secret here so you have to actually use that trick to hit that uh lamp blast ballast blast i don't know exactly how you pronounce it um so yeah that actually reveals more quad damage and then you can come down here to go to the uh, the last part of the stage. Now we have to come up top here to flip another switch, which reveals um, the door in that water. And we try to take out these dudes while we're here. Uh, hitting this guy up here reveals yet another secret. Just like so. And hitting this switch reveals this door. There's gonna be some guys teleporting in right here. And then this reveals yet another secret. I guess it's not re well, I guess it, it does count as a secret. It tells you it's a secret area. But it's really not that hard to find. I mean, it's just kind of like staring you in the face. And then that pretty much takes us to our exit. Uh, let's get all the shells we can. Oh, we've got max shells, doesn't matter. All right, so one level down. So the first couple of levels I shouldn't have much of a problem with. It's the, um, it's the last couple of levels that are gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, so shooting this thing up here reveals uh, this switch. And flipping that switch will give us uh, the super shotgun. And we're going to try to use the super shotgun more than the nail gun. Because we're going to need those nails for later on in this episode. And level. So shooting this door actually reveals the uh, partial invisibility. But what I want to do is actually kind of wait before I pick it up. Because you have to flip this switch to reveal another secret. Now I'm going to grab it. And that reveals this door. Just like that. So 
So there's going to be a Vor here. And uh, we're just going to take it out the nice, slow, and easy way. And I'd love to demonstrate what the uh, the Vor's projectiles do to you, but I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather not utilize that health for that purpose. You guys will probably see me get hit by one throughout the course of this playthrough. We'll see. And much like I said in previous Let's Plays, we're going to be doing a lot of quick saving on this episode, especially as we get farther into it. Um, so when we fall down here, there's going to be this big dark room. Uh, it's going to reveal a Shambler. Uh, in multiplayer, this bar is not here, so you can actually just jump over and grab the power-ups. And where that key is, there's actually a teleporter. Um, but in single player, they put this bar here, so you can't do that. It's much harder. But there are a few platforms down below, and if you fall down at a very specific angle, like this, you can grab a invincibility power-up. What I'm going to do is come through here, because there's going to be some quad damage I want to pick up. And another Vor. And I want to use this quad damage to take out these Vors. And some of these enemies. Preferably the Shambler. Just like that. And that's it for quad damage. But still, I made pretty good use of that quad damage. I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. We killed the Vors. The Vors are the worst enemies, I, I think. The Shamblers, they're, they can be a pain uh, if they're right in front of you. But, um, you know, as you guys saw in previous episodes, the, the Shamblers are pretty easy to take out as long as you have something to hide behind. So now we can come back up here, uh, try to get some more ammunition and so forth. Uh, I think we've pretty much gotten just about everything there is, though. We don't really need shotgun shells. We need we need nails, though, for sure. So let's go back up. And uh, I think we can do it this way. Some tricky platforming here if you want to try to grab everything. There's also, I believe there's a secret. I thought this was a secret. No, this actually opens up from the other side. Sorry. So if you come up here, that opens up, I believe. Yep, just like that. Which is the normal way to get the uh, the invulnerability, but again, if you fall a very specific way, you can actually land on that platform coming from the top, which is what I like to do. That just makes that part so much easier. Otherwise, you're going to get zapped by the Shambler. It's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, so this will eventually open up. This gate will open up, and that reveal reveals some more quad damage. Uh, but we actually come through the top as well to get that mega health and quad damage. Uh, I'm probably going to save that quad damage, actually, for a little bit later in the level. So we're going to have to jump up. Oh, I want to get his grenades. There we go. Yeah, so I could come over here, actually. You know what? Let's go ahead and do that, actually. Let's just do that right now. We'll save that. All right, so that puts us here down to this key. But like I said, uh, you know, if you if there wasn't that bar on the other side, you'd be able to just jump from platform to platform. So we're going to do exactly just that right now. I'm going to grab these items. You got to make sure you're not too close to the wall. Otherwise, you're going to get pushed over and probably miss your jump. And there we go. Um, what I'm going to do is try to take out these guys first. I just realized the Mega Health put me over 200, and I didn't realize that could happen in this game. I don't think I've ever done that before, to where I've gotten two Mega Healths back to back. But it's kind of interesting because, um... Uh, it, it's kind of interesting because, like, it's ticking down faster when it's uh, over 200%, so that's, that's actually pretty cool. So I basically wanted to grab that quad damage for this right here. 
We're gonna trigger this thing right here, and then I'm gonna intentionally fall down here to take out this boar. There's always good chances of me falling down in this part because it's a little tricky, and so I just wanted to take out that boar just in case, in case that happens. And then, uh, actually, that teleporter puts us towards the end of the stage, if I recall correctly. So we're actually almost done with this level. And you can also jump onto these platforms. So to trigger this thing, all you have to do is just get near it. Just like that. You don't want to try to cross through it right away, you will get hit. So just kind of get near it like this, and then jump through. There we go, got it. And that's it. Alright, so this is where things get a little tricky. Uh, this is where the game starts incorporating Vores, which are my least favorite enemies in the game. Uh, so in order to open this door, we have to shoot this right here. Get some nails. I'm going to save that quad damage for... Ah, screw it. Let's just get it. <laughs> Let's just get it. Let's play it safe. So right here, a lot of scrags, uh... No, this isn't the part I'm thinking of. Uh, the part I'm thinking of is later on in this level, never mind. There's a part where there's, uh, you've got the glass, the stained glass, and, uh, scrags just keep spawning out. Uh, grabbing the grenade launcher reveals a bunch of zombies, and again, you can only really kill zombies with explosives. So I'm trying to take this part really slow because it's just, you can die very quickly uh, by your own doing if you just mess up. Uh, especially with quad damage, and I want to save the quad damage for the next section. And if I can only see where these zombies are... Just trying to make sure I've got everything. There's also going to be a fiend right here. Nice little surprise. Alright, so that should be everything. Let's go ahead and grab that quad damage and continue on. And our first spawn is going to be right here. Which I want to take that dude out just because they're the most dangerous enemies in the game, uh, in my opinion. The spawns are absolutely horrific. I hate them with a passion. Alright, let's see if I kill that other spawn over here. Nope, he's still there. Son of a... So these guys are basically like bouncing grenades. They just... they... 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 <clears throat> bounce to you really quickly. 
and they just don't stop until they've pretty much killed you or taken a lot of health away from you. This is kind of hard to see. And coming over here, grabbing this, will bring the lights back on. There's going to be another spawn over here, but fortunately I've got the uh, invisibility. And there's another one right here. Just like that. You really take advantage of the invisibility. It actually works in this game, uh, unlike Doom. I mean, it works a little bit in Doom, but then once you like fire, all the enemies notice where you are. And uh, but in Quake, it actually works. Like I killed this guy and this guy and didn't even wake this guy up, which was pretty cool. So let's go ahead and save it here just in case. And then coming back here is actually going to reveal. Um, a secret but actually I'm gonna I'm gonna come back get this stuff and actually you know what I want to do is uh, just fall down get this stuff too while I'm at it so what's kind of interesting about this part is in Sega Saturn Quake this is actually where you find um, a, a hidden area. It's the Dank and Scuzz comic book. Now, Dank and Scuzz was a, a comic book series. Not a comic book series. It was like a one-off uh, comic book that somebody made on the internet um, back when Quake was relatively new. And it was a pretty funny little comic, but the Sega Saturn version of it, of the game, takes that comic, injects it into the game as a secret, and then dubs uh, voice acting over top. And it's pretty funny. Um... So I recommend checking out uh, that if you're a fan of Quake and want to see the, the Dank and Scuzz comic done with voice acting for the Saturn version. Alright, so that's going to be more quad damage. We're going to go ahead and pick that up. Trigger this and fall down below, revealing this. And then we can come... Oh, shoot. That's going to be a waste of quad damage. Oh, there's more quad damage there. Okay. Still. Another spawn right there. Man, there's a lot of quad damage on this level. I totally forgot, man. There's so much we don't actually even need it. Uh, so yeah, that was basically our key. So we can just go back. Oh, that's not open. Oh well. Whoa! Let's get that quad damage. So again, using the uh, the jump trick at the top of a hill, you can just sort of get some good air time. I, that's one good part right there to get uh, a lot of air time. Well, hello, are you stuck? You look stuck. <laughs> yeah, so I got my gold key. We're pretty much done. Um, Whoa! I wasn't expecting you guys to appear. Oh, and there's more ogres too. Interesting. I took out the first two that were caged in here, just you know, to make my life easier. I didn't. I don't remember uh, two more spawning in. That was kind of interesting. All right. So this is one of those levels that's actually a little bit non-linear when you first play it. It actually just kind of like gives you a bunch of directions you can go and you have to sort of figure out the way yourself. Uh, which is actually quite unlike a lot of levels uh, in Quake. I mean, it's not like Quake is super linear. Like, they usually give you a choice or two and you 
you know, you go one way and you realize you can't really progress because you need a key or something like that. But in this, it's, um, there's a lot of different pathways that are open right away. It's like a big spider web of corridors. They're all very distinct, so you don't really get lost, per se, but there are a lot of choices uh, on your first playthrough. So going this way actually sort of reveals um, the path to the end of the level. And a bunch of shamblers. Which we just triggered. And as you can see, monster infighting is a thing in Quake. And it looks like the shamblers are fighting each other. Oh, no. Uh, by the way, this level can get a little intense, too, and pretty much the rest of this episode can get a little bit crazy if you're not careful. I mean, it's just... I was actually a little worried there in that section because I triggered the Shambler, and I was sort of being forced into that corridor uh, because of the Fiends and, and the Knights. And what I'm gonna do is actually... Ah, oh, screw it. We'll just take out the Shambler. Why not? See, I triggered this guy too, so... Oh god, there's another fiend up there. Oh, jeez. Come on, fiend. Hurry up. See, I don't want to be towards the bottom because the shambler is down there. Oh, another fiend. Jeez, man, these guys just don't stop. And another night. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is take out this shambler. All right, he's dead. All right, so there's a, a bit of a trick you can do later on in this level, which Ooh, I forgot that that Shambler appears there. And I telefrag the Shambler. Uh, what's cool about this game is that um, if enemies teleport in right on top of you, uh, you take precedent over the enemy and you telefrag them. Uh, however, how it works in multiplayer is if you telefrag in on top of a guy, uh, you take precedent, not the player that's existing that was already in that spot. Uh, but there is a secret to actually teleport up here and appear right at the end of the level while having your final door key. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you guys that once we get there. Alright, so I killed all these guys. I probably could have gone up to that uh, area, but I'm going to come back and sort of go the, the normal way to show you. Like, the normal way I would probably go. Question is, are there any more shells? Yeah, there should be. 
Because I like to save my nails for like the hard parts if possible, especially once I have the super nail gun. Okay, nothing here. So this right here, this water, will actually heal you. You found a healing pool, but uh, I've got full health, so it doesn't actually do anything for me right now. But something to keep in mind if you're low on health, or if you get hit, you can get all your life back. Uh, I believe it is limited. I don't think it'll heal you infinitely, although I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've used it. Alright, so there's going to be a couple of things here. Uh, for one, uh, this is an elevator. If you fall off of it, you can actually reveal this secret and some enemies for some nice juicy red armor. Red armor is the best armor in the game. Um, so get it if you see it. And here's another shambler. You know, I'm really glad the fish aren't that annoying in this game. They just, they, they're just they so easy to take out. And the reason I say that is I've played a lot of first-person shooters where the fish in the water are like some of the most dangerous enemies in the game. It's just, it makes going in the water pretty much no fun. <coughs> Serious Sam, I'm looking at you. And, uh... Look, more monster infighting. It's like, thanks, man. You actually don't see that very often in Quake, but it does start rearing its head more often in the fourth episode. So there's going to be some more fiends here as well, but a super nail gun to help us out. Funny, they can jump just as quickly underwater as they can, like above water. It's impressive. All right, so um, this is just—I I just wanted to come here to clear out all these guys first. We actually can't get over there yet unless we do something like a, uh, like let's mess around with it. Let's, let's try it. Something like a, a grenade jump. No, didn't work. Too late. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, but basically what happens is you go through one of those corridors I showed you earlier on, and you eventually appear up there, up top, which reveals a switch. Uh, that switch makes this other platform move. So now that we've cleared out this room, let's go ahead and take care of that. Utilize this elevator. We probably cleared out a lot of the enemies on this section just because they kept running into us um, when I was trying to fend off that shambler. Out of shotgun shells again. So let me go through here and make sure all the enemies are taken out. And I'm pretty... Whoa! I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that'll be the case. Apparently not. Yeah, on episode four, there's enemies everywhere. There's pretty much every corner, every turn uh, has some form of enemy. I can't seem to bunny hop that well in this game either. 
Um, it feels like the bunny hopping is a little bit differently in this game than it is in Quake 3. But apparently you can bunny hop in this game. It's not something I ever did back in the day uh, on PC Quake, but Quake 3, yeah, I, I used bunny hopping a lot. Bunny hopping is where you can gain uh, greater momentum by continuously jumping at the right intervals. Uh, games like Painkiller have it, uh, I think Half-Life might even have it, uh, Quake has it, Quake 3 has it. Not sure if Quake 2 has bunny hopping. I would assume it probably does, but I didn't, I didn't play Quake 2 uh, as much seriously as I did Quake 1 and Quake 3. Oops. There's actually going to be a secret up here as well. This wall up top opens up, revealing some quad damage. And it actually takes us right to our, um, where we need to go. There's actually a guillotine right here. Whoa! I was not expecting that. Dude, stop it. All right, let's just not risk it. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> I haven't quick saved it yet, so I don't, I don't want to waste uh, waste my time uh, by dying by accident. Uh, let's get some more health though, because we're pretty much right at the end of the stage. We've already taken out most of the enemies in this level, so. Alright, so now that we've got the blue key, there's a reason this invincibility is here. It's so you can try to place a grenade, and then let it bounce you up into there. Just like that. So you would come up here, get the, uh, the invisibility, and then just walk around the shambler that would be moseying around here. And then that's it. That's the end of the stage. Wow, we still missed quite a few enemies, too. It's probably like all the sh uh, fiends and so forth in that one hallway that was... And this is where things start to really suck, because we start to see um, the spawns. And again, the spawns are my least favorite enemies in this game. And there's going to be some right here. Got him. When you see like the purple light, if you're using the Dark Places source port, then you know that you've killed them. Uh, but there's going to be more. Unfortunately. They're... Uh... I'm sure you'll see some of them in action, and I, this is where I'm going to be quick saving a lot. All right, so there's no, there aren't, bleh, there aren't any right here, but there are going to be some in this room. So basically, when we grab this key, there's going to be some spawns. And there they are. There he goes. Did I kill him? Or is he... S oh, he was stuck. He was stuck between this candle and the ceiling. Ugh. Thankfully, he got stuck, because those guys are, like I said, they're, they are a major pain in the ass. Um, once they start bouncing around, you're just like, oh, God, please stop. <laughs> Very few enemies do that to me in a game, where they actually start to freak me out, because, you know, I'm potentially going to die from it. And uh, the spawns are one of such, such said enemies.
And I think there might be a we're going to be saving like in every new room, guys, by the way, on this uh, this level. Hitting this switch right here reveals this platform. So there's basically quad damage in there, uh, but what I'm going to do is take out these zombies first. I'm going to try to play it nice and safe if I can, and I believe more spawns are going to appear down below. So, but first what I want to do is grab this health. Oh, shiza. I was not expecting that. And I got hit by the Vor. So let's go ahead and quick save again, grab the quad damage, and hope for the best. I thought there were some spawns down here. Apparently not. Here's some invincibility. So hitting that window actually revealed that secret. I could have sworn some spawns were supposed to appear down here. Maybe it's on the way back, because I think we have to work our way back as well. Another zombie. And I'm pretty sure we do get the rocket launcher soon. Uh, but yeah, this is where we need to go, so another quick save. There's a spawn. Oh god. Not too shabby so far, actually. I was expecting to get destroyed on that part, but... Um, especially with those spawns. We just got hit by a spawn. That took away, like, half my health, so... More quad damage. So we're gonna go ahead and just use that for this part. Quad damage is so good in this game. <laughs> Shoot. Oh. There's another spawn down there. Let's see if we can use, them, use grenades on him. Got it. God, I hate those enemies, man. Quake would be so much better without them. Uh, I mean, I guess they have a place... Uh, in... Fuck. I guess they have a place in the single player. Just to make things super tense, but they're... God, they're so annoying, man. Alright, now the question is, where do I need to go? I know I can go down here, get some more... Ooh, that was close. 
It's <laughs> this spawns right next to the invincibility. They were hoping that you'd get hit by it and die. I was pretty sure there's a secret up there. I'm not going to worry about it. I just want to get out of this place, get to the next level. So we pretty much got our key, so we can come back through. I'm going to go this way, though. Try to pick up all this ammo that I saw here. Uh, there's also some things you can do here. You can actually uh, get up to the top. You can get up to the top by using the jump trick I was telling you about, where you jump at the height of uh, a hill. Or in this case, a uh, candle post. Just like that. So I really like how they incorporated secrets in this game that actually specifically use that. So this is going to take us to the end of the stage. With some partial invisibility. So, actually I want to show you something real quick here. Um, this is the end of the level, and these little sticks here you see, they're always here. Uh, however, there's actually a little bit of a trick you can do. So normally you're supposed to go through the whole level get the key, flip the switch, uh, but you can actually jump off those little bars. Of course, it's not going to show it to me now. Um, But what's supposed to happen is if you don't go through most of the level, it actually pops up with a message saying, uh, hey, you know that you left the whole level behind or something like that? And uh, it's actually pretty funny. So... And actually, you know what I realize? What I just realized is that was the hidden level, actually. I never knew that. I never actually knew that. I didn't know that's where the hidden level was on episode 4. Wow, so we actually learned something on this playthrough. That's crazy, man. Alright, well, uh, this is actually kind of interesting because I don't think... I'm pretty sure I've been here in the past. Probably just in like multiplayer or something, yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, it's just been a long time. Yeah, this is our hidden level for this episode. I remember this level now, yeah! I used to play this level all the time in multiplayer. That actually works out really well, because we got to all the, uh, the secret levels on, um... the first three episodes, so it's good that we got to them... got to it on this episode as well. It's actually been a really long time since I last played this level. Like, it's been so long I barely remember, like, where the enemies are gonna spawn. 
I vaguely remember some of the level designs, like especially in the beginning. Like these hallways, I don't really remember them that that well. I vaguely remember spikes shooting into the walls. I vaguely remember. Ooh, I probably. All right, quick save. <laughs> Yeah, I had a feeling like if you touch that switch, it was going to uh, it was going to do that. So, Awesome. I do remember that the last part of the stage. The the last part of that level was actually in the Dank and Scuzz comic book. Now that I remember it, now that I recall. Um, Shit, I died again, man. I was getting really cocky with that. Which was really dumb on my part. I was getting so cocky, too. I wasn't even hitting anything. I was just like, you know... Pummeling, pummeling guys with grenades, or at least thinking I was. In reality, I was missing pretty much every shot. Now the question is, how do I activate that elevator? I completely forgot. Huh. Yeah, we probably have to go back to the beginning because there's actually quite a bit of stage we missed. Like there's a key we need, there's um... Oh, Jesus Christ, that did a ton of damage. Holy shit, man. <laughs> now some of you guys are probably like, God, why did you go to this level? Because <laughs> I'm just going to be dying over and over. Uh, there's got to be some health left over here. Apparently not. That sucks. Yeah, so this is going to be a problem. 
All right, good, more health. Well, oh, there's two keys, okay. I remember in multiplayer, we would just like hide behind this teleporter. <laughs> and that was, or it's called a slipgate in Quake, not a teleporter, but it offers the same functionality. And yeah, it was just funny in Quake. Uh, we would, there was a whole lot of stuff we would do back in the day that was just <laughs> kind of like trollish in nature. Yeah, I, I remember this now. I definitely remember this. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to fall down there yet. I'm just going to have to. Let's go ahead and save it. Secret right here. Whoa! I was not expecting that. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember this cage too. That's right. Kind of a waste of quad damage though. Yep, I remember that too. We used to camp up top in multiplayer. We dudes would like sit up top here and just shoot down with rockets. <laughs> yeah, the lightning gun is so good in close quarters combat. There's really nothing quite like it in the fir in the first quake in terms of uh, close quarters usability. Actually, I don't want to come over here yet. I'd rather go this way. Because my yellow uh, or gold door is right here. And that's it. <laughs> All right. I still don't have my uh, my silver key though. That's that's going to be a problem. Unless that's up. Nope, still not. Still not going. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea, man. Alright, so what am I missing? Ah, uh, that's right. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> I got caught by that right there. Oh, jeez. Shamblers are actually a little bit scary when, like, there's nowhere else to go. Really? That's it? I need the silver key, not quad damage. Um. Hey, guys, I really have no idea where to go. Unless it was up here the whole time and I missed it. 
Ah, uh, it's over here, I'm sure. Yep, okay. It's been so long since I've actually played this level. Um, honestly, I don't even know how I accessed this level back in the day because, um, like, for single player purposes. Um, simply because I, I don't remember ever doing that secret where I would just um, uh, hop across those, like, nubs on that last level we played. But I definitely remember this whole stage. Um, absolutely, absolutely, especially like this part right here. You know, I definitely played it before in single player, but I don't remember ever getting to it manually. Maybe I used like a cheat code to get to it or something. Because much like in Doom, you can use uh, you know key commands to get to like console commands to change your map. Yeah, I remember this too. Yeah, that's our key. <laughs> and now we gotta find the door. We should actually be nearby. And that's it. Wow, I didn't even. <laughs> I don't even think we'd get to that level. I completely forgot about it. Like, literally, completely forgot about it. Um, well, that's pretty cool, man. We did it, but that actually puts me far behind on this let's play. I was. Um, <laughs> I was expecting to be done with the let's play by now, but oh well. All right. If I recall correctly, there should be some spawns here. Wait, no, that's not till later. Okay. It's this part right here. By the way, this level is extremely dangerous. Lots of spawns on this stage. It's a very deviously designed level. Uh, so you need to flip these switches. And the reason I toss grenades down here is that there's this wall up there, that red wall you can barely see, pushes you into this pit of spawns and um, forces you to deal with them in one situation. Chances are, if you fall down and there's all the spawns down here, you're you're gonna die. That's it. Uh, no way around it, unfortunately. Um, so let's quick save. There's gonna be another spawn up here. There's going to be a lot more spawns down here as well. Oh, I hate this level. This is probably my least favorite level in the episode, but we still have another level after this.
All right, so there's a couple different things you can do here. For one, there's, um, let's try to take out these guys first. Uh, but there's actually a switch you can flip right here. But you know what? I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to go the normal way, the quote-unquote normal way. Completely skip that vor for now. Oh, I got all of them. Nice. Or not. There's still one. Shit. Oh, I got him. <laughs> okay. Um, switch over to the nail gun. We're going to go ahead and come up this way. Which is dangerous because of the fiend, obviously. I'm not worried about the knights in this game nearly as much as I am the fiends in close quarters combat. Alright, so there's this altar here. If you shoot it, even more vores drop down. This is the altar has been defiled. But by defiling the altar, you get the blue key. And then normally what would happen is you'd come back through, the spawns would drop again. Uh, but I've already taken care of them, so... Uh, there's going to be even more spawns down here. Uh, right here. Episode 4 really requires you to know... Uh, where everything is, at least on Nightmare. Because there's just some really devious level design. I'm just going to play it safe. I want to take these guys out from a distance. I swear, these last couple of levels in this game really put me on edge. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, these levels are such a pain. Alright, and uh, I don't know if I said it at the beginning of this episode, I thought I did, but maybe not, is I haven't actually played through this episode in a very long time. Um, I played through it on stream a couple weeks back, uh, and I got to about this part in the game, so uh, some of the level designs probably going to confuse me just a little bit at this point. If we shoot that, we can get up to this secret right here. Um, the question is, do I want that quad damage yet? I don't think I do, because I haven't... I haven't flipped any... S oh, that's right. I've got the key. Okay, I do want to go there. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab that then. Come on. Need to take advantage of this quad damage. Oh my god. That actually really sucks. Ooh, actually this could work out really well. I've got invincibility now. 
so. Alright, so I actually completely forgot that invulnerability was there. That would have really helped me when I was streaming this game a couple of weeks back. Because uh, I was getting destroyed at this part as well. So what you're supposed to do is come down here, flip this switch, and uh, basically the walls lower. Revealing this. save it. So our rocket launcher is over here as well, which we definitely want. Alright, so this part is going to be pretty tricky as well. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is take out a lot of these guys from down below. I don't even know if that works, but there should be some quad damage right here. Uh, how many times do I have to say I hate the spawns? I hate the spawns. And that's it. That was actually, you know, thanks to us quick saving, that actually wasn't too terribly bad. Um, Alright, so there's going to be a Shambler that drops out right here, actually. <laughs> thought it was a little bit farther, but... Uh, do, 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 do... Hello, Shambler. And some spawns, of course. Can't have episode 4 without spawns. Of course, I can try to use the light trails to figure out where the spawns are. Okay, no more spawns. Alright, so there is a secret here. You have to jump on the side. And you can try to maybe take some of these enemies out from here? No, wishful thinking. So there are going to be zombies down here. Zombies in the sky, apparently. Which isn't supposed to happen. I think you're supposed to fall down into the water, but... I, I don't know if, like, the game's been glitching up during this Let's Play series because of the Dark Places engine. It's quite possible, because that stuff didn't really happen that often in the original... the original Quake build. There was just spawn, like, right here by the shotgun shell box. Or the shotgun box. Yeah, spawns are freaking everywhere in this episode now. Look! <laughs> well, hello! <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and fall down here. Um...
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this quad damage and use it. It's a novel idea, huh? I think there might have been spawns in that water, which is why I shot- Whoa, fuck, there's some spawns. <laughs> I swear, I fucking hate- I freaking hate these enemies, pardon my French. Oh, man. I hate spawns so badly in this game. That's like the 20th time I've said that in this Let's Play, but... There's a reason you don't hear me say it in other episodes of this Let's Play series. It's because they don't exist outside of episode 4. Spawns are pretty much exclusive to this episode. And I think... Okay, I thought this was... Yep, I had a feeling this was going to lower down. It's been so long since I've actually played through this level, I totally forgot if that was going to lower or not. But it did. Um... I thought this was supposed to open up. That was a waste of quad damage. Yeah, one of these stairwells is supposed to open up as well. Yeah. We can shoot this right here. To get us up top. I'm going to quick save it. It's a little slow. But there is going to be uh, some enemies up here. A shambler, specifically. Did he jump down? He did jump down. Why did you jump down? That just makes my life easier. I mean, I have no problem with that. Did I mention I hate spawns? And... Did I mention I totally forget how to get that mega health? Alright, we're gonna come down here now. Grab this quad damage again. I'm going to switch over to the lightning bolt. I actually did not want to do that because that's going to waste my quad damage for this part. Yeah, quad damage is wearing off, so we can switch over to the rocket launcher now. This is our last section. So basically the quote-unquote boss of this level is just a bunch of vores. They jump around like idiots. And you just need to take all of them out, basically.
And that opens our final door. Of course, man, they just really handing out the, the quad damage on this level. Really handing it out. And there's our last rune, and we have completed episode four. Um, much more smoothly than I uh, originally expected, guys, mind you. Um, so yeah, I'm actually kind of running out of time. I got to get to work. I got to get get prepped and get to work um, and edit this video uh, so we can export while I'm at work so you guys can watch it. Um, so I'm not going to read the, uh, the congratulations screen today, but there it is in all its glory. You can pause the video and check that out. Um, thanks for watching, guys. There's another screen. And so, like I said, this opens up, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually come back and do the final boss in a in a part five. I know that's kind of like, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I know you guys probably just want to see it right now, but uh, I realized there's also a couple other things I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to put on some, like, invincibility codes and show you some, like, rocket jumping tricks and stuff like that, and some neat things you can do in Quake. So what I'm going to do in part five is uh, restart the game. Um, not restart. I'm going to continue the game from here, uh, beat the game, which will take us about five or ten minutes. It's not very long. And then afterwards, I'll show you some extras where I, I try to rocket jump into like really unique areas and stuff like that. And show you some really neat stuff uh, you can do in Quake just to mess around, basically. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I'll be back with more Let's Plays like this sometime soon, and stay tuned very soon for part 5, most likely in the next couple of days. Uh, so take care, guys. Uh, I'll see you later.